So, today uh, we will be discussing in this lecture um, life prediction and in life prediction, life testing uh, whether it is highly accelerated life testing or uh, uh, various approaches that are used, the objectives are like this. One, getting idea that the, uh, if we apply additional stresses into the component, uh, can we precipitate some failure mechanism so that we can modify our design, number one. Number two, can we, uh, can we um, do accelerated testing uh, for screening the components? Screening means there is a lot of hundred uh, components or thousand components. If we put them, so if what it is a pass or fail test. So if the, they go through, that means they will be able to perform much better on the lower stress level because uh, uh, screening is done at higher stress levels. Then third one and which is very important, we try to get an idea what is the life of the component, so especially if you are developing a new product and we do not have data on that product. So uh, what, how it will perform in the field uh, if this component is put to uh, use and that is where the, uh, the use stress uh, is, uh, it is use stress means the range of whatever is specified by the vendor or for the requ as a requirement uh, minus 20 to plus 150 degrees centigrade or 120 degrees centigrade whether the component uh, is meeting our expectation in terms of life and then from there we try to get an idea what is the mean time to failure because we, there is a population and then finally we get an idea uh, what would be the expected failure rate only idea that ob ob uh, that observation may not mesh with the real time to, because you know whatever testing is done it is done under controlled condition but when the component goes into the field it has got various uh, other stresses which are coming in and playing out on the component and so, so, uh, with the uh, synergy of different stresses that are playing so it might aggravate or it may not aggravate at all. So these scenes are there and that will only happen when the component is used in the field. And the idea and good thing about it is once we get the field data, we can always modify our procedure, our data and testing protocol so that there are less surprises in the field. So let us go on to the live testing now we will be discussing. So there is something called highly accelerated stress testing. This highly accelerated stress testing uh, is one of the very predominant me method and, uh, uh, and, uh, and we have here uh, component uh, we will su uh, subject to a predetermined higher stress level. This works at two level. <clears throat> one is industrial domain uh, high stress level. It is used at part of quality control procedure. This leads to acceptance or rejection of the component as I had mentioned uh, and then um, and, and then acceptance. So uh, we come to know uh, whether the lot is acceptable or not. The assumption is that the sample collected from the lot and which meet the uh, acceptance criteria provides an assessment that component from this lot will not fail during the service condition because we have applied additional higher stresses. And now if it is meeting and it has come out clear, that means it will be and then uh, in laboratory environment it is used to precipitate the competing failure mechanisms because the research is going on on the material uh, and how uh, there is a uh, crosstalk between stress and strength uh, and the mechanism is precipitating. So we have to know before we re release the product to the field uh, how uh, what are the different competing mechanisms which are degrading the component. Okay. Uh, but one has to be very careful, uh, we have to apply only up to certain limit those stresses because if we apply additional stresses, new mechanisms will crop in and they will confuse uh, uh, us for the expected performance or we will not get the idea of mechanism uh, and our rest of the research. Um, whether it is a design improvement or anything, they may not be. It may not be all that uh, useful. So one has to be very careful. Careful how much stress to be applied. The second type of testing is called life test, and this is a, a, a two categories we have. The type one test, wherein it is called uh, time to failure. It is terminated 
in certain period uh, we have put the uh, whole lot uh, on testing and we have assigned the period after x hours the test will be stopped then it is called time terminated stage and the second thing is failure terminated we want to see some failures and uh, if n number of failures are uh, out of n components x, x number of failures are there then the test will be uh, terminated so these two protocols are followed and they have their own benefit <coughs> And so basically uh, it is very clear that these samples are drawn from the lot and they represent the lot you know uh, so, uh, so uh, and then they are subjected to uh, not highly higher stresses they are subjected like for example if our specifications are there from minus 22 plus 150 uh, then the stresses will be of that order only it will not be more than that because we want to qualify the component for use condition and use condition the vendor has given us minus 22 plus 150 so that is what the objective is and uh, based on this type 1 type 2 uh, we can always derive the mean time to failure because a lot was put under test out of uh, 1000 components if 5 failed so 5 into 10 raised to the power minus 3 that is the kind of thing we will have uh, you know and then mean time to failure will be um, derived based on uh, summation of all the failed component and whatever that uh, typical procedure okay and if we plot these things on viable distribution we get a life characteristic and probably we might uh, 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 you know uh, use this information uh, either mean time to failure and if if it is following let us say uh, exponential distribution viable distribution the advantage is it will tell how close we are to the exponential distribution and if it is closer if the beta factor is around 1 1.1 0.9 then we can say okay so then we can convert this mean time to failure data uh, into failure rate data also that means live test data we got and we have now a statement of failure and of course once we put into the uh, system in the field uh, we can see how far we were close to um, the data we got from testing and from the field condition what is the correlation between these two uh, and that is a uh, because you know otherwise uh, some for some component especially new designs the failure data is not available so this is one of the best approach that we have here we get a fair data to begin with we get some data and later on uh, we can use either this uh, input uh, as a part of baseline approach and our plant specific experience uh, also we can use and combine these two so this can be priori uh, our uh, thing can, could be uh, evidence and we can apply a baseline approach and see uh, how these two together uh, give us the posterity something like that so highly then another thing is highly accelerated test highly accelerated test is also referred as burn in test these tests as the as we are using this term burn in that means the component should fail and should go, go to the state where we give, have an idea about the failure mechanism because uh, uh, so uh, this test is not designed to provide information of live one should be very clear because we are applying very high stress no information will be there for uh, time component like earlier we had that live testing and all and we used it for mean time to failure here this, that information will not be there the aim is to collect information about the component failure mechanism okay further the failed component are subject to root cause analysis which is a another ball game that means we are trying to understand the root cause we are not calling it as a random failure we are trying to we know that there is some cause because it has come from stresses so uh, so failure mechanism and root cause of the failure so that our failure mode is not affected we have information on our failure mode so failure mechanism failure mode and its criticality the aim of this test is not to collect uh, of course we are not collecting data and all that and the major objective in this is to collect information on the product design if a new product is being designed we have to subject it to test we have to see what are the failure modes and uh, modes which are undesirable uh, ensure that the mechanism which are sitting there and synergy of stresses from different uh, sources how they are playing out and uh, causing that uh, that particular failure mode which is undesirable so uh, we have this accelerated live testing Accelerated live testing is basically, in simple words, if you have to understand, we try to because you know component lasts for 30 years, 40 years uh, like that, but they cannot be tested for 30 years and 40 years. So what what it what it is done is, we increase the stress when we know that the stress has got effect on life of the component. So that means we got a uh, qualitative co correlation. If I increase the stress, I am reducing the time and I am getting information about the product how 
uh, if I have the, there is one more important parameter required here is, it is called acceleration factor. And how to find out that acceleration factor, that also. We, so, uh, th this curve shows the fundamental principle of accelerated testing. Uh, we have, we are increasing the stresses of number one and we are trying to collect as many failures as possible. So, we have three, here th this is linear and the curve B is basically one uh, telling one story and the curve C is telling another story. So, uh, that means we, and we have three stress level, stress level one, stress level two, stress level. why three stress level? Because we want three point because for drawing a line uh, we need three point because if in between if any uh, any uh, loop is there that will get pointed out otherwise it will look like a straight line the way we are seeing in the middle and the those information will be there then we'll apply an, and then it is a used life uh, what we have is uh, one year two years whatever it, or five years 15 years so uh, we are trying to accumulate the failures here and from there we are trying to understand uh, how this component is going to fail in terms of time. So, we are trying to get an idea of what should be the expected life. Now, the objective is different. Okay. So, uh, this curve this curve is very important. Three stress level, we have to do it. Compress the, uh, uh, precipitate the failure so that uh, and then use the acceleration factor to give a uh, uh, life for the use uh, life or normal uh, operation of the component. Now, uh, as I was discussing, uh, for excellent life testing, uh, acceleration factor is very important. The uh, we have to design the exper experiment to get idea about the acceleration factor. Uh, three stress level. I told you the reason we want to have a curve. Uh, um, uh, you know what is the trend of the failure, and then figure shows three curve A, B, C to un uh, to underline importance of minimum three levels. The curve A is applicable when the stress life relationship is linear. However, this may not be true and uh, we have curve A and C. Okay? And then uh, estimation of acceleration factor, how it is done that we will see in the ne next slide. Uh, the, uh, it may be noted that stress levels should be such that applied stress accelerates only those failure modes which are applicable to use condition. I mean we have to, uh, we have, to uh, have uh, so, first we have to determine, determine the interest on what is the mode that we are looking for, what is the mechanism and those applicability only should go for when we design our test for accelerated condition, whether it is temperature, humidity, what kind of stresses we should introduce, which are, which are the degradation mechanism for that particular uh, failure mode. So, uh, how we define acceleration factor? Acceleration factor is nothing but life of the component in uh, use condition and life of the component in accelerated with the accelerated stress. This model is communicating the same message. So, life predicted using uh, stress level uh, during normal condition and the, during accelerated condition. But how to know? Uh, okay, we will know about the uh, use condition. But what should be the acceleration level? Because we are trying to uh, develop an acceleration factor. That means though parameter, two parameters are unknown. Now. So, F can be expressed in terms of failure rate per unit time. So, if we can do that and if we know that it is following an exponential distribution, then acceleration factor even failure rate data can be used for use condition and accelerated condition. It is because mean time to failure is inverse of um, uh, failure rate. And here again acceleration factor is equal to use condition upon accelerated condition. So, this is the definition but problem is we have to de de determine here acceleration factor. So, we know that one more thing that fundamental stress, stress relationship is life is inversely proportional to the given stress. Okay? Now, given the backdrop that we have this RNS model available with us, um, uh, k is equal to that is the reaction rate is nothing but a, a constant a into exponential. This is uh, k is Boltzmann co constant and the Ea is activation energy and T is temperature in Kelvin. So, uh, using the RNS equation, is there any way to find out the acceleration factor? Let us see how it works. So, these are the different parameter, uh, parameter we have, we have Boltzmann constant you know 8.6 uh, into 10 to the minus 5 uh, e electron volt per degree Kelvin is the unit and uh, uh, temperature is in Kelvin. Okay? Uh, activation energy we know that. Uh, so, uh, we, uh, so, now let us have that we have that life and stress they have inverse relationship. 
okay uh, now we know the uh, reaction rate there also so uh, there if you are trying to assess given that the failure criteria determines the life of the uh, reaction rate the time to failure will be 1 upon so the time to failure will be 1 upon the uh, whatever model uh, 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 we have uh, for uh, reaction rates you know so there is assumption here that reaction rate is directly or indirectly related to degradation or life you know so and then t is equal to one of, uh, a into exponential ea upon kt uh, so uh, now if i have to talk about acceleration factor we know that use condition time or use condition and time we got from a uh, acceleration testing so now we can use this relationship acceleration factor is equal to this model we saw in the pre previous slide uh, we put here and then we got a very beautiful model uh, acceleration factor exponential e upon kt 1 upon uh, t in use condition and 1 upon uh, in uh, t in, in accelerated condition uh, after uh, the after uh, this uh, modern technology or model phm physics of failure uh, there are some question on this arrhenius model uh, but then till some proven solution is available uh, we have this uh, thing and uh, if at all we have some peep into how degradation takes place that which is nothing but replication of the reaction rate uh, and probably reaction rate is a uh, that assumption uh, though we got the solution but this has to be uh, all the hypothesis should be tested uh, how far this is uh, it is reflecting the degradation that means so many component uh, failure mechanism mode their testing their physics of failure uh, and uh, huge investment is there so uh, but as on today uh, in life testing this model uh, is very uh, popular so like we saw arrhenius model which is he, uh, which is here um, af acceleration factor is equal to for other condition also for like uh, iri model is there uh, where in the statistical thermodynamics uh, uh, fundamental statistic and th thermodynamic conditions where acceleration uh, factor is given by this model use condition again the same signature but put in different uh, so you can see to some extent it is similar to the but that there is a modifying factor over here uh, in the um, uh, arrhenius model then if uh, temperature humidity temperature humidity is the most uh, preferred way of testing especially cables and electronic component because the electron is degrade under humidity and uh, and that's why it has to be qualified for high temperature high humidity condition so that uh, we can see the expected life so uh, if we want to get acceleration factor uh, we can have this acceleration factor this works for temperature humidity and uh, that's what we have then there is inverse power, power law i think we saw inverse power law or power law model in physics of failure and all nothing to discuss much about it and then temperature non thermal tnt model they call uh, we have this model um, it is being it is used it, it uh, to some extent uh, if, whether the exponential of which apportionment we have to do it uh, it looks uh, similar to our earlier model and uh, that's what we had now in this lecture that uh, uh, what is the purpose of live testing per se an accelerated live testing highly accelerated live testing and uh, halt uh, um, uh, testing and all. Uh, so, in nutshell, we can say it is not only life expectancy, it is basically failure mechanism, it is basically the function itself or the purpose itself that uh, screening of the component uh, for, uh, for uh, rather as part of qualification, uh, we test them at very uh, high stresses so that if the, it has passed there, uh, it is fit for the operation. So, these are various uh, bouquet of uh, life test uh, uh, methods and uh, the, and the special advantage is live test uh, because they are used in physics of failure for understanding the physics of uh, degradation and they are used in PHM also uh, uh, through the route of even PO, POF only or maybe for further validation. So, uh, live testing is a very important field and uh, uh, yeah, and uh, that, uh, and also even today, live testing though for you know a couple of tens of years it has been going on, but still lot of research is going on because as I mentioned, uh, RNS model there are question and uh, with uh, live testing we do we develop a controlled environment. So how far we are able to um, have a synergy of the field condition? So these are the questions, and but then still um, finally we rest on 
uh, especially qualification of the component, uh, cables, uh, then uh, our electronic or solid state logic. Uh, these are the components, there is no other go, we have to go uh, subject them to live testing, especially under high temperature, high humidity and one more additional vibration. Thank you.